Hello, welcome to today's video where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In today's video, we'll continue taking a look at Clip Studio Paint's ribbon brushes and stamps. Links to additional tutorials, as well as everything mentioned in today's video, will be down in the description below. Now that we know how to make our own ribbon brushes, what are some ways we can use them for webcomics? Like I mentioned in part one, one of the most common uses is for drawing detailed character design elements like lace, ruffles, and jewelry. Adding in these details to your work will make it look more impressive without forcing you to spend hours drawing anything tedious. Another way to use ribbon brushes is to draw common repeating patterns, like chain link fences, braids, music notes, etc. In the Clip Studio Asset Store, there are lots of user-made ribbon brushes available for download for all sorts of uses, many of which are completely free. All you have to do is set your search type to brush before typing in what you're looking for, and you should be able to find it without too much issue. One tip for incorporating decorative ribbon brushes into your work is to try to make them blend in with your art style as much as possible, so they don't stand out too awkwardly. My favorite method for this is to draw out the ribbon brush details on a separate layer from my line art, then use the Convert Brightness to Opacity function to turn them into their own line art. Then, right-click the layer and go to Convert Layer to switch it over from raster to vector. As I've mentioned before in previous videos, one of the biggest benefits of drawing your line art on a vector layer is that you can go back and make adjustments to it after the fact, like brush style and line weight. So for incorporating decorative ribbon brushes into your work, you can just switch the brush style over to the brush you use to draw the rest of your line art, change the line thickness to match, and just like that, the assets will blend in as if you drew them all by hand. I find that ribbon brushes with little or no shading work best for this method, as any semi-transparent shaded areas might be interpreted wrong by the layer conversion. As for decorative brushes, one of the most popular uses is stamping in fun elements like sparkles, flowers, or snowflakes to add some visual interest to your work. But there are also some more practical uses too. This brush that I downloaded from the assets page lets me draw in a distant crowd of people, with each person facing a different way for an added sense of realism. Once I have the brushes downloaded and added to my brush library, all I have to do is start placing figures wherever I want them. Like I explained in part one, many ribbon and stamp brushes have adjustable fill color and line art depending on your chosen main and sub colors. In this case, I'd like my figures to be completely solid with no border, so I set my main and sub colors to black. I can also freely control the size of the figures with my brush size options. Once they've been stamped down on a raster layer, I can add effects like blurring and gradients to really blend them in with the surrounding artwork. Another common type of decoration brush is reaction stamps, like exclamation points and sweat drops. These are great for comedy and lighthearted comics as a quick way to show emotion. You can really get creative with how you use decorative brushes in your comic project. Think about things you find yourself drawing frequently and ask yourself whether or not they might be recreatable as a ribbon brush. You'll thank yourself later. As one final tip, did you know you can find all your downloaded brush tips in your materials library? Go to Image Material, Brush, and you'll find the tips for every brush you've made or downloaded. If you find yourself using a certain ribbon or stamp brush often, it can be helpful to take a look at the brush tip and see how the creator made it by dragging it onto your canvas. For my own projects, I like to recreate a downloaded brush tip with my own tools and swap the original tip out for the new one on the brush. Not only will the ribbon details blend in easier this way, but it'll ensure that it looks exactly how I want every time. Those are the basics for how to make and use decorative ribbon brushes in Clip Studio Paint. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.